Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Wake Tech Application Workshop. My name is Amanda Tucker. I am one of the academic advisors, and I will be assisting with this event today along with my colleagues, Natalia and Blair. We have with us an academic advisor from the Research Triangle Park campus, Katie Wicker, and she will be leading us through the PowerPoint presentation and the question and answer session. We encourage you to ask questions in the Q&A box throughout the presentation, and those questions will be answered during the end portion of the question and answer. Thank you so much for joining us today, and I'll go ahead and turn it over to Katie. Hi everyone, happy Wednesday. Thank you for joining us. Um, we are excited to help you guys start your applications um, to get transferred out and go on to your four-year institutions. Um, and for those of you who may have already started the process, hopefully um, we can answer some lingering questions that you might have through the presentation. But again, as Amanda said, please um, feel free to ask questions um, at the end, kind of jot those down and, and save those and we'll get those answered at the end. All right, so we're going to cover a lot. Um, we're first going to talk about what you need to include when applying. We get a lot of questions from students, you know, do I need this? Do I need that? And so we'll talk about that. And, and hopefully answer those questions. Um, we're gonna give you guys some information about where you can find the documents that you might need. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about the admission requirements. Um, finding the transfer applications can sometimes even be difficult, so we're gonna talk a little bit about that. How to navigate Common App. Common App is um, an application tool that a lot of North Carolina institutions and even across the nation use um, for um, admitting students. Um, and it's a great place to go and submit your application. So we want to go through Common App because we get a lot of questions about Common App. Um, and then we're going to give you some some tips to kind of finish us up. So jumping right in, um, when you're thinking about admission requirements, um, we get a lot of questions from students um, that think that they have to complete their associate's degree in order to transfer, and that's not the case. Although we absolutely recommend it in a lot of cases, there's, a, there's really great benefits to staying with Wake Tech and completing your associate in arts or science or engineering, um, but you don't have to do that. You can meet minimum admission requirements and go ahead and transfer if you want to. And there are even some majors that may prefer that you do that. Some of the design schools or design programs that you might find, um, you know, social work can sometimes be a popular one because they want you to go ahead and, and try to transfer so that you can start taking your, your core classes. Um, because if you push off transferring after you complete your associate's degree, then that could increase your time at the university um, and therefore cost more money. So there are a few programs um, where going ahead and transferring prior to getting the degree is, is kind of the, you know, what's encouraged. But as far as meeting minimum admission requirements, every school is a little bit different as far as what they require as a minimum. Um, their GPA could vary depending on the institution. What courses they require as a minimum can differ by, by school as well. Um, so thinking about that, we get a lot of students who are you know, really interested in NC State. Obviously, they're right next door. Um, NC State's minimum admission requirements vary by major. So a student who's applying to NC State and going for business has this set of um, minimum admission requirements and a student who's applying to NC State for biology has a different set of minimum admission requirements. So you really have to know with NC State what major you're going to pursue before you transfer. You can't really go to NC State as an undecided student. You have to be certain of what you want to major in because they're going to ask you that on the application and you want to be able 
to to put what you plan to pursue at the university and that's how they're going to evaluate your admissions application um so nc state is is unique in that regard they're the one of the only schools in the state that um evaluates your admissions application based on your major so major definitely matters ecu on the other hand like most colleges admits you to the university and then you meet minimum admission require minimum requirements to declare your major so it's almost like a two-step process versus nc state's kind of minimizing it all into one um, so with ECU, minimum admission requirements are the same for every major. Um, I believe their minimum is either a 2.0 or a 2.5, and then they want you to have your English completed and at least 24 transferable credit hours. So if you are, you're thinking about going ahead and transferring without the degree, you want to you know, know what the minimum admission requirements are before you apply. GPA obviously important um, we don't really need to tell you that but we do kind of want to go into it a little bit um, just so you can kind of understand how gpa is calculated um, and you know make good decisions as you're going through um, your time at wake tech so again we already said every four-year school will have a minimum gpa requirement um, and then we talked about NC State having specific GPA requirements based on your major. Um, so you want to be aware of what the GPA requirement is and do you meet that requirement or will you meet that requirement by the time you apply? Earning C's, you know, you hear a lot of times instructors, you know, your friends, even advisors will say, well, a C or better is going to transfer. And that's absolutely the case. C or better. Any course that you take that's a transferable course that's part of the CAA, as long as you get a C or better, it's guaranteed to transfer. But keep in mind that C equals a 2.0. So if you get all C's in all of your classes, you're going to end up with a 2.0 GPA, which is not going to be competitive um, for most institutions. So we really encourage you and I doubt there's anyone listening right now that, you know, their goal is to get a C. Um, unless it's like a class that, you know, is, is going to be really difficult and you're like, I just need to pass this one class um, and then I'll never have to worry about it again. But for the most part, I think a lot of students strive for an A, right? I mean, that's that's everybody's hope is that they work hard and, and do what they need to get an A. And so an A is going to give you a 4.0, B's equal to or 3.0, and C's give you that 2.0. So just want to make that clear, um, you know, and that maybe go without, that might go without saying. So um, just wanted to, again, make that clear and make that point. Course repeats. Um, we do encourage students to repeat courses where they might have received a D or an F. Um, for GPA reasons, if you repeat the course, um, Wake Tech will only include the higher grade in your GPA calculation. So if you take English 111 and you get a D, and then you repeat it, English 111 and you get a B, now Wake Tech is only going to use the B into your GPA calculation. Both attempts are going to show up on your transcript, so whatever school you apply to, they're still going to see that you attempted it twice and the grades you got both times, but only the higher grade is used in your GPA for Wake Tech. But keep in mind, there are schools that are going to go in and recalculate your GPA and include both attempts in that whenever they're calculating your GPA for admissions purposes. So just because Wake Tech only includes that higher grade does not necessarily mean that the school you're applying to won't take all of your grades and recalculate it. So that's something that might be a good idea if you've repeated a course and you're really concerned about that. You could talk with an admissions representative at the school that you want to go to and they can give you an idea of how they calculate GPA for admissions purposes. Withdrawals. Um, we get are right around this time of year. We're starting to get questions about students who don't feel like they're doing as well and they are thinking about withdrawing. The purpose of a withdrawal is to allow a student to 
come out of a course without it affecting their GPA. So if you successfully withdraw from a course prior to the deadline, um, the deadline's mid-March for this current semester, but if you withdraw, it will not affect your GPA. It will show up on your transcript, so it'll show the course name and then it'll have a grade and then it'll say W. Um, so the schools will still know wherever you're applying that you attempted the course but withdrew. So um, that's definitely something um, to consider. Um, if you feel like there's a course that you're really not sure about, you do have a period of time in each semester that you can withdraw without it affecting GPA. But keep in mind, side note, withdrawals do affect your financial aid, um, satisfactory academic progress. So definitely, if you're receiving financial aid, have a conversation with financial aid before you make the decision to withdraw, so just so you know exactly how it might affect you for the future. Uh, we do have a GPA calculator um, in self-service under um, the My Progress tab. So if you're interested in calculating GPA or you want to see, you know, if I get this grade this semester in this class and in this class, what will my GPA be at the end? Um, you can play around with it and, and see um, what kind of GPA you might end up with at the end of the term. So use that. It's a great resource. If you need help with it, don't hesitate to reach out to an advisor. We're happy to help you with that. One thing that admissions looks at, yes, GPA matters. Yes, grades matter. The types of courses that you're taking matter. Most those are of utmost importance. That's the first thing they're going to look at. But other things that they look at are things going on outside of the classroom. What are some things that that you have accomplished? What are some different um, programs and organizations that you might be involved with? And a few of those we, we jotted down here. Um, we do offer volunteer opportunities through Wake Tech. Um, if you go online to our website, um, the Office of Volunteerism and Leadership, um, they schedule volunteer opportunities. Now, I will say probably in the last year that the opportunities have have been limited because of COVID, um, but there's still a lot of great work out there that can be done and volunteers are needed for. So always a great thing to look into. Um, getting involved with sports, um, that's something that they would want to know. Um, getting involved in different organizations and clubs on campus. Um, we have a tool at Wake Tech on our website called Extra, and that's where you can go um, to find out what clubs and organizations uh, have going on and, and join some of those events. Again, with COVID in this last year, a lot of that's been limited. Um, even things going on outside of Wake Tech, different organizations and clubs that you can get involved with, um, we always encourage we get a lot of questions from students who, you know, work full time and they don't have time necessarily to volunteer or they don't have time to, you know, get involved with a club. Um, so I think it's beneficial for the college that you're planning to go to to know what you're doing outside of the classroom. And if you're working a full time job and going to school, I think that's important to know that shows um, time management that shows your ability to multitask that shows your ability um, to um, be able to you know your focus to provide and your focus to to live um, if that makes sense so so definitely work experience is something that I would absolutely recommend that you list on your application Internship opportunities are also a really great opportunity for students to get out of the classroom and see what an actual career might look like, um, get some experience. Um, getting that hands on experience is, is priceless, so we always encourage internship opportunities. You can even work um, if you're interested in internship opportunities, getting in touch with your advisor or your advisors um, like if you're in an applied program your faculty advisors 
They may have um, connections to different internship opportunities in the area. Um, and then also career and employment resources. Um, they're also a really great tool to helping students um, prepare to apply for different internship opportunities. So lots of, of resources to tap into at Wake Tech to help you with some of these things. So I wanted to make note of that. OK, so jumping in to the actual application process. So we have a lot of students right now that are in they're in the trenches right now planning to apply for fall semester. Some of you may have already um, started thinking about applying for the next semester. Um, one thing that I would encourage with starting this process is you know, doing your research ahead of time, um, making sure that you completely understand what the requirements are, like we had, have already talked about what the minimum admission requirements are, and knowing kind of all of the things that you're going to need to do so that you can be planning ahead and you're not scrambling to try to get it all together in a week. Um, so the first thing that you have to do is the actual application. Um, and every school kind of uses a different um, application. Some may have their own application. Um, some may use Common App, um, and we'll talk a little bit about the differences in those in just a second. So you'll fill out the application and then you have your application fee. Um, most schools are going to have a fee to apply. Um, I would say they probably range anywhere from like, I don't know, maybe 45 to, to 85 or 90. It depends on the school. Um, but that's probably the range of what it is to actually submit your application. There are fee waivers that are available. Um, and I know when you complete the Common App, there's a section of the Common App where you can select whether or not you um, qualify for a fee waiver and it lists the different ways that you can qualify. Not all schools provide it, but I definitely think it's something worth looking into, especially for those that might receive the Pell Grant um, or things like that. So that's something to consider. You'll also need to order transcripts. Um, it is important for you to find out from the school that you're applying to. Are you going to need um, your high school transcript or do you have enough credits that you don't even need to send that? Some schools, if you have a X number of credits or if you're completing your degree, you don't have to send your Wake Tech trans or your high school transcript. Um, so that's important to know. And then obviously you're going to need to send transcripts from all colleges that you've attended. So not just Wake Tech, if you've attended other institutions or if you've attended schools, um, community colleges, even through um, like a dual enrollment program, you'll need to send those transcripts. They want to see all college work from the original institution. So um, make sure that you send everything, even if you registered for classes for a semester, but you withdrew at a college, you still need to send those. Um, these institutions have a way of running your name through a system and seeing where you have enrolled. And so if you have enrolled at a college and you don't send them your transcript, they're probably going to assume the worst and assume that you're trying to hide something from them. So you want to send everything. Some schools require personal statements, some don't. Um, and when you're filling out the application, it'll tell you if a, a, an essay or a personal statement is required. Um, but be prepared for that. Um, maybe something that you can go ahead and start working on um, and even get the ILC to review that with you um, and kind of look, look back over your work and provide um, feedback. References. Some schools want references. Um, you want to think about um, as far as references go, think about the academic references, so faculty, um, instructors, and people that you've come in contact with in the academic world, but then also think professionally. So um, supervisors at jobs, co-workers at jobs, um, you know, supervisors at different volunteer organizations that you might have been with. So thinking about it from that perspective instead of from a perspective of, oh, well, I have a really great relationship with my uncle and I think he would be able to write a really great reference. 
you want to kind of stay away from family members when it comes to references. Deadlines, um, usually those are posted on each individual school's website. So you have a very clear um, idea of when the deadline is to apply. But I will say that deadlines that are listed a lot of times on these websites, you want to apply well in advance of that. For example, I want to say that the deadline for ECU might not be until, you know, April, May, somewhere like later on um, for the next fall semester, but you need to be applying to these schools now. Um, just because the deadline is is way, you know, out there, um, you don't want to wait that long. Um, I really would encourage students who are applying for fall semester to be applying right now. Um, there are some schools that even have application deadlines coming up now. So February 15th is the deadline like for NC State, for example. So now is a great time to be getting your applications in. And the reason for that is you want to be able to go ahead and get everything in, be admitted, decide on what college you want to go to so that you can be in the mix and register for your fall semester with all the other current students. Because if you wait until you know April, May, June to apply to some schools, even because maybe their deadline's not until June, then you're missing out on being able to register ahead of time. So you're going to be registering later than everyone. It just, you don't want to feel rushed and you don't want to feel like you can't get the classes that you need. So think about that when, it, when you see those deadlines posted. Okay, so a big question we get a lot is how do I get a transcript? Um, I get emails a lot of times from students and they'll say, hey, can you send my transcript for me? No, I personally can't send the transcript for you. Academic advisors don't send transcripts. That's something that our registration and records office um, handles. And then um, our the National Student Clearing House is who we work with to send out um, electronic transcripts or transcripts online. So this is the best way, the fastest way, the easiest way to send your transcript is to send it through the National Student Clearing House. So how do you do that? If you go to the Wake Tech homepage, wakeTech.edu, and then select Student Services up at the top, and then you'll scroll down a little bit and select Registration and Records, and then there'll be over on the left-hand side, and maybe even boxes in the middle, um, there'll be something that says How To. And so when you click on how to, then you'll select how to send a transcript and it's going to bring you here and you'll go to request a transcript online. Um, again, this is done through an outside source. So Wake Tech doesn't actually prepare the PDF transcript and have it sent. The National Student Clearinghouse does. A lot of schools utilize the National Clearinghouse um, to send out their transcripts online. So you'll click the request transcript online button. It will take you to the Clearinghouse website. You'll create an account and request for your transcript to be sent to whatever school you needed to be sent to. Or we'll talk a minute um, in just a second about how you can actually request it to be sent to Common App and then Common App will distribute it. So if you're applying to multiple schools, you may not want to spend, you know, eight or ten dollars for every single transcript. You might just want to spend $8 one time, send it to Common App, and then Common App will distribute it to their schools. Not all schools use Common App, so that's the only downside to that, but if all the schools you're applying to use Common App or you're applying to multiple schools that use Common App, I would encourage you to send it to them rather than to the individual school, but we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second. You can also view your unofficial transcript. So if a college ever reaches out to you and ask um, for an unofficial transcript just to see um, and kind of get an idea of what you've taken, um, you can view your unofficial transcript in self-service. And then there's also a link in here where you can request your official transcript and it'll take you to 
the page we were just looking at. So a couple of different ways to, to get that. So um, again, there are some different application types. Um, there are some schools that have their own application. Um, so if you go to ECU's website, you can see here it says apply now and it takes you to where their application is located. Um, you can also get to applications through CFNC. Um, CFNC.org is, uh, most students know what that is. You probably have been using that resource for a lot of years now, um, but they also have an application hub where you can go in and there's also a link to get to the application from that institution. So there's there's several ways that you can get to applications. Um, and so just wanted to point that out to you. There's no wrong way to do it. Um, totally up to you. Now with Common App, this is the tool that a lot of schools use um, for their applications. Um, not every school uses Common App. So for other schools, I know, um, I think it's Appalachian one. That's one that comes to mind. I don't think that they use Common App. They have their own application. So there are some schools that that don't use it. Um, but for those that do, I would absolutely recommend going in Common App, going ahead and creating an account for yourself and starting to play around with it. Even if you're looking to apply you know, for, for next spring or the following fall, go ahead and get out in Common App, create an account for yourself and start looking around at it. Um, so we created sort of a um, step by step on how to kind of get started with Common App. Um, so I'll go over this, but I also want to log into Common App so you can kind of see for yourself what it's going to look like. Um, telling you what to do and then showing you what to do to me are two completely different things. So um, I'm such a visual person. I feel like I get more out of it if I can see it. So I want to show it to you guys. Um, but again, we had already talked about going ahead and getting some of your materials together, um, creating an account. Go ahead and, and do that. Um, get that started and then you can go through and start searching for the colleges and go ahead and add them on to your dashboard um, so that they're already sitting there sort of waiting for you. OK, let's kind of get out of this and we're going to go to the Common App website. All right. So we're going to go to sign in. Obviously, if you haven't created an account, you're going to click on create an account and you are going to be applying as a transfer student. OK, so you'll want to make sure you click transfer student. OK, so this is sort of the home page for um, Common App. Um, Hopefully you guys can see. Can you guys see this OK? Hopefully you can. Um, so this is the, the home place for the Common App. Um, there are four different areas of Common App. You've got personal information, academic history, and supporting information, and then program materials. So there's four different areas. And then there's sections um, within those areas that um, you know different criteria and different sections from even within that. So there's a lot of material, um, a lot of things that um, they're going to be asking for. Um, the first thing you want to do is is add your schools like we were talking about. So if you go to add program, that's where you can see all the schools highlighted and it's in alphabetical order and you can see this is showing every school across the United States. So this is not just North Carolina. So if you know that you're looking for a specific school in North Carolina, you could filter it out by state if you wanted to. You could filter it out by college or by deadline. There's a lot of different filter options, 
but we're just going to filter it by North Carolina just so we can see what schools in North Carolina use Common App. So we've got Barton, Catawba, Davison, Duke. A lot of the private institutions are listed here. Lise McRae, Meredith is on here. A&T, North Carolina A&T is here. NC State uses Common App. Um, UNC Asheville, UNC Chapel Hill. One thing about UNC Chapel Hill that I want students to be aware of is that they break it down by major. So if you're applying to UNC Chapel Hill, you really want to make sure you read each one of these really carefully to make sure that you're selecting the right one. They have the re I'm assuming the reason why they do this is because they have different requirements, different questions, different things that they need based on which major you're applying into. So they need to have different applications. So you can see there's a bunch. UNC Greensboro. So there's definitely schools that in North Carolina that don't use Common App, but if you are planning to apply to NC State, um, UNC Chapel Hill, um, UNC Greensboro, um, this is definitely the tool that, that you'll use. And then when you find the one that you want to add on to your dashboard like we were talking about, you just click this plus sign and that'll add that on to your um, list of schools. You can see here that I have added NC State for fall. Right now, fall is the only thing that's available. If you're planning to apply for the spring of next year, spring 2022, that's not on here yet, but you could still come out here, click on the fall and get an idea of what the application looks like, the type of questions that they ask so that you can be prepared. Um, and then I also added UNC Greensboro on here as well. Um, just so you could see the differences in those. OK, it also tells you here what the fee is, the application fee. Um, I want to give you some information about um, what this means over here, the admissions plan. Um, sometimes you'll see rolling admissions and then sometimes you'll see regular admissions. Um, the biggest difference with that is with rolling admissions they're constantly reviewing applications. So as you submit your application, their staff are picking it up and starting to review it. Um, so they're um, constantly looking at applications. Well, regular admissions, they basically wait until their deadline and then or they wait until a certain point and then they start reviewing applications kind of all at one time. Um, they do it more in like a bulk, so they, they're probably not going to be waiting until July if you apply now, um, even though that's when the deadline is posted. They're probably going to wait until a certain point and start reviewing them all at the same time. So that's kind of what that means there. So if we go to selected programs again, these are the two that I had selected just so we could see. All right, so let's go back to the application. Um, when it comes to personal information, this is where you're going to be putting in all about you, your name, your address, um, where you're from, contact information, your race and ethnicity. If you have a military background, they're going to want to know that information. Um, other information that's going to be, you know, wanting to know what's your first language, um, your family education background, they like to know this for statistical purposes. Um, says here they want your social security number, but you can see it doesn't have an asterisk, so this isn't a required field. Um, but if you're pursuing financial aid and things like that, you may want to list that so that they can make sure that they've they've got that information. Um, they are also want to know what your career interests are, so it's a little bit of miscellaneous under this other information. And then the last thing, remember I mentioned about the application fee waiver. Um, this is where you can go in and select if you feel like you might qualify. So if you click yes, it's going to then give you even more um, to look at. So you select one of the following indicators. So if you're currently receiving a federal Pell Grant at Wake Tech, that could be what you would select. Um, 
or there might be a couple of different areas that you can select and then you would sign and then continue. So that lets the institution know that that you might qualify so that they can evaluate that. Um, that application fee waiver. All right, academic history. This is a big one. This one, honestly, this is probably the section that's going to take up the most time because this is where you're entering all the schools that you've attended. So you're going to list your high school. You're going to list all the colleges that you've attended. You also will enter college coursework, which uh, it, it's saying for me that I don't need to enter any coursework for the program that I selected, um, but it may require that you enter college coursework information, um, GPA. If you took any tests, um, have any placement scores, AP, IB credits, CLEP credits, you're going to put all that here. Um, so again, if you have CLEP credit, let's say you have took one, it's going to ask what exam, what date you took it and the score. So this is where, you know, going back to the presentation that I was showing you, it says gather materials. These are the types of materials that you want to be gathering. Your scores um, from CLEP, your scores from AP. Um, as far as SAT and ACT scores, there are some institutions that don't need that from you. If you're getting your associate's degree, you likely don't even need to provide that information. Um, the same with the high school transcript. So be sure that you double check on the school's websites, um, their admissions pages to find out if you even need to give them that information because they may not need it. Uh, let's see, let's go back. We've got supporting information here. This is going to be where you can list involvement outside of the classroom that we had talked about. So work experience. If you're working a full time job, you want to put that here. If you're volunteering or if you're, you know, a, you know, a single mom of three children, you want to put that on here. They um, want to know what you're what you're doing, who you are. Um, because they really want, I would say, the majority of schools want a diverse population. They don't want all the same student and they really are eager to learn about their students and figure out what what they're doing, what they're into um, and, and what they have going on. Any achievements that you want to note, um, you can put that here. Additional documents that you want to provide. Um, could be uploaded here and then they have a couple of um, affirmation statements that they want you to read through um, there. And then the last is the program materials section. You're going to see there are two different um, links to click on and that's because there are two schools that I selected, UNC Greensboro and NC State. If you selected more schools that you wanted to apply to, then you'll have more listed here. But right now we just have two, so we'll start with UNC Greensboro. It gives a little bit of information about UNC Greensboro. And then it lists their unique questions to UNC Greensboro. And this is the other section that's probably going to take up the majority of your time because there's going to be um, some just short answer questions, but then there's also going to be Probably if there are any essays, here we go, optional essay for merit scholarship consideration. Um, here's the essay prompts and it gives you a spot. You could also go and type it. What I might would do is type it in a Word document and then copy and paste it in here if you decide to do that essay. Um, again, this is optional. This is not something you have to do to um, submit your application, but if you want to get in the running for a scholarship, then um, um, this is something that you could do. So that is what that looks like and then different documents that they might require. Um, if you are doing a personal statement, 
Um, it says personal statement prompt. Please provide a statement that addresses your reasons for transferring and the objectives you hope to achieve. So it looks like they definitely want you to do a personal statement for UNC Greensboro. You'll type it and then add it here. Type it up in Word um, and then add it on there. Recommendations. Um, if you are providing um, any recommendations here um, or references, this is where you can post that, but you can also say I am not adding any. Again, I would look at UNCG's website and find out is this something that they really look at when they're reviewing admissions applications? Is this something that they, you know, one of their top considerations is their recommendations or is it something they don't really look at at all? Um, there's no point in putting in a ton of effort into something that they're not really going to look at. Typically, I do tell students if it's optional to do it. Um, it's better for an institution to have more information about you than not enough. So typically I encourage it, but if they specifically say on their website recommendations not recommended or recommendations not required, um, you may may decide to skip that. So totally up to you. And then obviously the second school that you listed, you'll click it on, click on that school here and it gives you a completely different set of information. So they've got general information about the college. NC State has a good number of questions. Um, so this is an area that you would want to sit down and spend some time really thinking about explain why you selected the academic program above and why you're interested in studying this at NC State. Um, it asks uh, some other general information. More about you discuss any obstacles or hardships that you've encountered and how you dealt with them. Um, NC State is committed to building inclusive community who in your life is depending on you. So they've got a good amount of questions that they're asking students to complete that are really thoughtful questions. Um, so this is going to be one of those things where you might do one and then say, OK, I need to take a break. You can save it, log out, come back to it later and finish it. Don't feel like you have to do it all at one time. And then again, any documents? that you want to submit can be submitted there. So that's kind of what Common App looks like in the different areas. Um, they're the different sections that you'll be completing. And then once you complete all of them, this will turn green and it'll say eight of eight completed or 11 of 11 completed. And that's when you know it's time that you can submit your application. So just wanted to give you guys a little peek into what Common App looks like. So hopefully that was helpful for you guys, but we'll go back to the slideshow because I want to give you guys time to whoops. Let's do that again. I want to give you guys some time to ask questions. Um, from current slide. OK, so we kind of already talked about all that, so we'll skip over here. Um, one thing to throw out there, if it asks for a personal email, you definitely don't want to use your Wake Tech email and you want to be mindful of what your personal email is. So if it's something a little bit off, um, like cool chick 19 or Wolfpack fan 22, but you're applying to UNC Chapel Hill, that's where you might want to create a different personal email. Even if you create a whole nother email, for just for applications, um, I would do that. Um, and you could put like your first initial, middle initial, last name at gmail.com or something like that. Um, the fee waiver, we already talked a little bit about that, but know that that exists. If you feel like you qualify, definitely indicate that on the Common App or check out the school's website, admissions website to find out how to apply for the fee waiver. Residency. Um, the North Carolina residency determination, you guys did that for Wake Tech. You'll have to do it again for the um, university. They'll want to know your residency certification number or RCN. So if you don't have that, that's another one of those things that you in that gathering materials um, stage where you'd want to gather that as well. Find out your residency certification number. 
you should have received it in an email when you did the residency determination when you first applied to to Wake Tech. But if you don't have that in an email and that's long gone, you can log in to ncresidency.org and um, you can get your residency certification number that way. Um, just throwing this out there too, semester hours versus quarter hours can be very different. If you attended an institution that um, implements quarter, a quarter system, those don't equate to semester hours. So when it comes to meeting minimum requirements, it says have at least 24 transferable credit hours. If you're not sure if you meet that because you have classes that are under the quarter system from another school or from, you know, back in the early 90s, then definitely reach out to that um, institution and find out kind of how they look at those quarter hours. Resources, please don't feel like you're doing this by yourself. Um, I would say first and foremost, university representatives, um, their admission staff, they're going to be probably your go to. Um, we can help Wake Tech Advising. We are absolutely happy to help. But there are some things that are just better answered by the university um, going straight to the source. You know, how are you guys going to look at this or do you really need this or that? Um, those are questions that we're going to refer you to the university representatives for. Looking at their websites, getting familiar with what they require is also really helpful. Um, and then obviously what you're doing right now, attending this workshop. Um, hopefully we can provide resources that are going to help prepare you. All right, here is my information. If you need to reach out, here is our general advising email. If you want to reach out to just a general advisor for questions. Um, if you need to make an appointment to meet with us with an advisor virtually, you can go to this website here um, or you can just do advising.waketech.edu um and make an appointment that way too so a lot of information really short amount of time what questions do we have great thank you so much Amy. all right we all do right, have a few questions question. you want me to read them all go for it yes all right all that's right. the question um, um that has really good. Sorry, am I? Yeah, it's kind of. Um, Can you hear me better now? Skipping. Yes. Okay. A student that relocated to North Carolina last summer to join their family. They had finished two years of Moscow First Medical State University microbiology. They currently got into got into their second semester at Wake Tech EFL, and they're hoping to get into um, a four-year pathway plan this fall, and then hoping to get into NC State in two years after Wake Tech. Um, but those are just kind of draft plans right now, and they have um, little knowledge about the process. So they're asking when it, when it is a good time to contact someone in academic advising regarding the plans that they have. I, I would say it's never too soon to contact advising. Um, we can talk to you about what that plan might look like so that you can be thinking about it. Um, if you're currently taking EFL classes now, you might want to wait until you finish EFL and get started in college courses um, to reach out if you wanted to. But again, I don't think it's ever too early to reach out um, to advising. Um, but if you want to wait until you finish EFL, that that might be better. Great, thank you. The next question, what is the best process or action to take if and when applying to universities outside of North Carolina? I would say, and that's a really great question. Thank you for asking that. So schools outside of North Carolina, you know, academic advising at Wake Tech, our staff, we are obviously going to be way more knowledgeable about our schools inside of North Carolina. Um, we have the CAA, that comprehensive articulation agreement with the schools in North Carolina, 
But when it comes to out of state schools, you know, we don't have that agreement in place. So we definitely aren't as knowledgeable. So my biggest piece of advice is to go ahead and reach out to that the school that you're interested in, contact admissions and talk with them about, you know, where you are right now, what you're doing um, and find out if the courses that you're taking are going to transfer um, the way you want them to. Obviously, with schools inside of North Carolina, we know how they're going to transfer. We have that information at our fingertips, but with those out of state schools, it might be a little bit more difficult. Some schools may have a transfer equivalency guide on their website, so you could pull up, you know, that school's website and go to a transfer equivalency search tool, see if something like that's available to see if they've ever evaluated credits from Wake Tech or any North Carolina Community College before. Um, that might help as well, but I would say the sooner you can reach out to someone at admissions at these out of state institutions, the better. So that way you have a good understanding of you know, the process and making sure that you're picking and choosing the right classes appropriately. Great, thank you. Um, the next question, does Wake Tech offer job shadowing opportunities or have shadowing connections in specific industries, for example, healthcare? Um, I would say that would be a great question for your faculty. Um, as far as job shadowing. Um, so faculty would be a great resource to ask if there's a faculty member that you feel comfortable with um, or getting in touch with career and employment resources. Um, if you go to careers.wakeTech.edu, you can schedule an appointment um, to meet with a career development specialist and they may be also able to help you with setting up some job shadowing opportunities as well. Great, thank you. The next question, how recent should my reference letters be? For example, if I'm applying next year, but last semester I did really well in a class, do you suggest I wait until I'm applying to ask that professor for a reference letter? Huh, that's a good question. I mean, I could see either one being OK. Um, obviously, if you're thinking about references, you know, know that not all schools are going to ask for those references. Um, I, I would say if you feel like the instructor is going to be able to write you a better recommendation now, um, I would ask them to do that, but make it general enough that you could use it for any institution, um, especially if you're planning to apply to multiple schools. You want to make sure that they're not writing a recommendation letter for a school that you don't actually end up applying to or, you know, vice versa. So I would say yes, you could go ahead and do it now if you feel like they're going to be able to write a better recommendation now that it's fresh. Um, you were just in the class rather than waiting a year and then may not they may not remember. Um, so I would say yes, you could go ahead and ask for a reference, but make the instructor aware of your plans so that they can write it accordingly. Great, yeah, I completely agree. The next question is, will the ILC or any other Wake Tech resource help review any personal statements that we may have to write for applications? Yes, yes, um, that's a great resource to use. You can meet with them. I believe they're doing on campus, like limited on campus appointments, and they're also doing virtual appointments. But yes, they, they do help with that. Um, I would encourage you to have a draft written um, before you go to them. Um, so that way they know that you've given it some thought and you've put something down rather than just going with nothing. So if you already have it written, absolutely. I would say send it to, to the ILC. I've, I've done that a few times with students. Great. The next question, we just have a couple more. So if anyone had any more questions, go ahead and put them in the, in the question box now. But the next question is, do I need to request, request a transcript 
Um, I'm currently in ESL classes that will end in April, and then I would like to join construction management as my major. Um, and what should I do if I want to join or apply to NC State University? So I'm, I'm thinking maybe um, two parts, like when do I need to request my transcript potentially, and what steps would you recommend they take for NC State? So if you're currently in EFL classes right now, is that is that right, Amanda? Yes. So if you're currently in EFL now, then you're definitely not ready to request transcripts. You'll be requesting transcripts when you apply. And if you're planning to complete your degree at Wake Tech before you transfer, then you've still got, you know, essentially two years to complete your degree. Um, so you've got some time before you'll need to be requesting transcripts. You'll wait until you apply to do that. Um, once you complete your EFL coursework um, and you are ready to start taking courses that will count in your degree program, I would definitely encourage you to meet with an advisor um, and we'll go over all of that information with you. Great, thank you. So the next question, can I take AP or IB classes at Wake Tech? We do not offer AP or IB. That's something that you would do while you were enrolled in high school. Great, thank you. And then the last question, or actually I think we got one more. So the next to last question, um, there, this student is studying to become a DPT physical therapist. Is it the best, is it best to transfer to a school that has a pre-physical therapy slash kinesiology program like ECU or UNCG? Or is it all right to transfer to an institution like NC State and study biological sciences? I would have to say that that is totally your choice. Um, I think there are definitely perks to going to a school that has, you know, the major that does seem to directly relate to physical therapy. Um, but at the same time, I mean, when you apply to a DPT program, they want diversity. They want students who have all various backgrounds. And as long as you meet the prerequisites for your DPT program and have good grades in those classes, that's what they're, the majority of students are looking for, um, or majority of programs are looking for. Um, you're gonna see, and here students apply to DPT programs with various backgrounds. They did not all go and complete their bachelor's degree in kinesiology or exercise science. Um, you may have students who went and get a, got a degree in business and then three years later decided, you know what, I really, I really want to do a physical therapy program. And they came to Wake Tech, took a few prerequisite classes that they needed for the program and are applying now. So I would say go with where your interests are. If you really want to go to NC State and you really like the major at NC State more than kinesiology or more than exercise science, then that's what I would do because the major that you pursue, that you enjoy the most, you're going to do better at. Your GPA is going to be higher because of it, um, which is in turn going to also help you with um, your application and being competitive for a DPT program. Keep in mind too that most, I would say the majority of four-year institutions have what's called pre-professional advising services. So even if, you know, NC State doesn't have a kinesiology or extra science program, they have a pre-professional advising office that helps students prepare for professional programs like physical therapy. So you're still going to get support um, to help you make sure that you're picking and choosing all the right classes and that you're getting the experiences um, that you need to apply to a, a physical therapy program. That's a great question. Great, and then our last question is where can I see the amount of credits I need to finish my degree? I think at Wake Tech. Self-service. Um, if you go to self-service, uh, click on student planning, 
and then click on view my progress you're going to see an outline of everything that you've taken at wake tech and then it's going to give you an idea of what you still have left um, i don't believe there's anything in self-service that specifically gives you the number of credits that you need but definitely schedule an appointment with an academic advisor and we can look over that with you in self-service and make sure that you know 100% exactly how many credits you have left. Great, thank you so much. Um, I just put, as we're wrapping up the presentation, I just put the survey link um, in the question and answer announcement area. If students don't mind going ahead and clicking that link and filling out the, just a brief survey for us to give us some feedback about this event and um, future events that we hope to have. Um, that would be greatly appreciated. If you do complete the survey, you will be entered to win a $25 um, gift card. So that's great um, as well. And I just wanted to say thank you all for attending today, asking great questions, and thank you, Katie, to, for presenting. Um, it was a great presentation and very thorough. All right, so um, I'm going to end the live event at this time. Have a, everyone have a great day.